Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the premiere episode of Up Close with Max Hampton. I am your host, Max Hampton, and folks, we have a very special first guest on our show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Barney the Dinosaur. Barney, thank you so much for coming out tonight. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks, Max. Well, Barney, it's been a while since anybody's really heard from you. Uh, You were very big in the mid-90s, and suddenly... You're not around anymore. I mean, what's going on? Well, you know, I had a couple of things going on since the ending of my show, and, uh, you know, I'm just very happy to be alive. I've been living life, and I continue to do everything one day at a time. Very nice, Barney. So, I wanted to ask you, how did you feel getting into the preschool genre? Because I know that you were a very big actor, and you were trying to get some things uh, moving And then suddenly you fell into the preschool genre, you know, the likes of Sesame Street. And, uh, you know, let's hear it, Barney. Well, uh, it wasn't really planned. I actually dislike the preschool genre. But being a big purple dinosaur there really doesn't leave you with much options. So, I don't love it, but it paid the bills and it kept me on top for quite a while. You know, singing those songs and composing the music was a very good aspect of the job, but, um... Overall, I wish I could have done something more serious. Well, what are some serious roles that you would have considered doing back in the, you know, the 90s and even earlier on back in the day when you were a young purple dinosaur? Well, um, I did audition for Big Bird a long time ago, and unfortunately I didn't get the job. And I thought that a big dinosaur would have made more sense than a big bird. But, if I was going to be a big dinosaur, I would have to be a lot bigger than a T-Rex. And, uh, everybody knows that I'm actually pretty small for a dinosaur. So, even though I'm not quite where I wanted to be in terms of Sesame Street, I guess it paid out because eventually I had my own show, Barney and Friends. Yeah, we know that one too well. Any other roles that you, uh, weren't able to get? Well, this one really bugged me. I auditioned for Forrest Gump. And right away, they just took one look at me and said, uh, you're in the wrong profession. Maybe you should be out in a jungle scaring somebody. And, uh, you know, this was after Jurassic Park. And, you know, I really should have auditioned for that. Unfortunately, I had the chicken pox that weekend. And I did audition for the new uh, upcoming Jurassic Park recently. So I'm just waiting for a call back. We're going to see what goes on with that. But other than that, um, oh, another role that I didn't quite make, and this one really bothered me, was Spyro the Dragon. Um, I was originally going to be Spyro. The issue was I'm a dinosaur, not a dragon. So, unfortunately, Spyro got that part. They were going to actually title it Barney the Dragon or Barney the Dinosaur, but they kept going back on it thinking that a dragon would have been more mystical than an extinct dinosaur. So I didn't really have much options, but Barney and Friends wound up being a hit, and that's all that matters, whether your fan base is little kids or grown adults. It worked out for me in the end. Um, Another thing I wanted to ask you, Barney, is why was there an addition of two more dinosaurs? You were doing so well on your own. BJ and Baby Bop, what's what's the deal with that? Well, this one was was bullshit, to be honest. Um, There was a short stint of ratings loss, for a couple of weeks, and suddenly they said, we need more dinosaurs. You know, there was that dinosaur show, um, I can't recall what it was called, it had that little baby coming out of the egg. Anyway, um, so at the time, dinosaurs were popular, there was the success of Jurassic Park, and they thought BJ and Baby Bop would be a great addition. In addition, uh, we were actually, we had a drop in ratings due to Arthur, which was on WLIW 21 at the time. And, you know, Arthur was a pretty good show. No one ever seen human beings, you know, in the shape of animals with clothing. And then they had pets to go on top of that. It was a really weird show. But overall, you know, Barney did what it it was set out to do, and that was to entertain little kids. Uh, Well, that's very interesting. I actually never knew that, Barney. Thank you for sharing that. And... You know, since the popularity of your show has died down over the years, you know, several generations of of fans have watched Barney, and people still know who you are today. You're like Mickey Mouse or Michael Jackson. (laughs) No, really, Barney. But, um, you know, what about the shows of today 
the shows such as Yo Gabba Gabba, Team Umi Zumi, you know, the Fresh Beat Band. I, I think they're all ripoffs, to tell you the truth. Um, you know, some people might say that I'm a ripoff of Sesame Street, but that's absolutely not true. I'm the only puppet on the show until, of course, later other dinosaurs were added on and that orange dinosaur towards the end. And, you know, that that nailed the coffin shut and it, it's never opening again. There have been talks about Barney reunions and I just said no to that. But in terms of Yo Gabba Gabba, I think that's just ridiculous. There are some catchy songs here and there, but um, overall, I don't think that children should be watching such a crazy show. And by the way, that show came from Japan, and the J- the Japanese could be a little eccentric from time to time, so... I mean, my kids don't watch it. They they actually watch reruns of my old stuff, and a little of this and a little of that. <laughs> I understand, Barney. It's very hard to have your children watch something else when... You know, your product's just as good, if not better. Exactly. That's that's my philosophy on it. And also, Barney, I just wanted to, to ask, um, do you think you could sing the I Love You song pretty please? I mean, I've been a big fan of yours for years. <laughs> I actually had a feeling you'd be asking that. I, I had no choice, Barney. I really had to ask. My I have, fan, I have children of my own. They want to hear. The fans want to hear it. Please, Barney, get, take it away. Absolutely. Uh, For you, and thank you so much for having me. Um, Here it goes. I haven't done this in years. I love you. You love me. We're best friends as friends could be. With a great big hug and a kiss from me to you. Won't you say you love me too? That was beautiful, Barney. Thank you so much. Thank you. That I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Not a lot of people appreciate, you know, the time and effort Barney the Dinosaur took to become what it is today, and that's an icon in children's television. Absolutely, Barney. Thank you so much for coming. I heard you recently got married. Congratulations again. Thank you so much. Um, we've been married for two and a half years now, me and Bertha. And she's very beautiful. She's a very beautiful pink dinosaur. And, uh, you know, it was was very fun being here, Max. Thank you again for having me. Anytime, Barney. Ladies and gentlemen, next week we are going to have another special guest. Stay tuned. And you have been watching Up Close with Max Hampton. Good night, everyone.